This is Inspiring Careers with your host, Ingrid Centurion. We're gonna talk about fascinating technologies that will impact your future. Meet inspiring entrepreneurs and people that are making huge differences in the community and around the world. We're gonna share career and life lessons of inspiration and success. Our mission is to inspire our viewers to make a better life for themselves by sharing our stories, our interviews, and documentaries. Please stay tuned as we have incredible guests coming up. After not being able to find gelato like it was in Buenos Aires, Argentina, Sam and Jules, who are the owners of Dulce de Leche, and decided to bring a little bit of Argentina to Framingham. They're here with me today to tell us all about their business and the delicious desserts we have. We're gonna learn a lot about Argentina and sweets and chocolate and coffee and teas from Argentina. So thank you for being on the show today. Thank you. Thanks. Now, you didn't know that my father was from Argentina. I did so not I'm know very that. familiar with Dulce de Leche. I love Dulce de Leche. What inspired you to start your business? I was complaining <laughs> every day that I couldn't find the gelato that was like back home and kept complaining and complaining and until I took him to Argentina and he tried it for himself and it's like, yep, we don't have anything like this. How was it? It was great. The coconut dulce de leche chocolate chip, which wasn't even her favorite and I didn't even realize was on the menu, was uh, I realized I probably wouldn't have it again unless I learned to make it. Yeah, you can <laughs> even get it uh, delivered to your house in Argentina. Mm -hmm. It's a little Very different. Good. Now, what is your background? What was your profession before you got into the chocolate business? Yep, so I'm a scientist, chemistry and material science, and I used to discover drugs and formulate drugs and all sorts of stuff like that, so it really lends well to the chocolate and, and the uh, frostings and everything like that. And chocolate is a crystal? Chocolate is a crystal. It's a crystalline substance. So now you're able to synthesize and formulate and use your chemistry and physics and create these marvelous chocolates that we have here for everyone in Framingham. We, we work 16 hours a day, seven days a week right now. Oh so. my yeah, we're open seven right. days a week. You're open seven days a week, okay. Yeah. Let's talk about the specialty of your gelato. It's uh, peanut free. So we don't have any peanuts in the store. We don't use it absolutely for anything. The other thing that's special about our gelato is it's lactose free. Because he knows how to work with chemistry, we add lactase enzyme to the milk while we make the base. And so except for one uh, flavor, which is cheesecake, um, dulce de leche cheesecake, because we add the cheese afterwards, everything else is lactose free. And that opens the doors to a lot of people that have been blown away that they can eat ice cream and gelato again. Uh, and so it's very healthy. Uh, as healthy as ice cream can be. Not that much <laughs> sugar. How much sugar is in the gelatos? So there's still sugar. It's interesting because lactose is a sugar, but it's not very sweet when we break it it gets sweeter and brings a unique sweetness. So we do actually cut back on the sucrose and corn syrup a little bit because we've turned the sugar that was already in the milk into a sweeter sugar. Now you have 22 flavors? Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you have a specialty flavor of the month? What's your number one flavor? I think the biggest seller is the coconut with also the and chocolate chip. It's, it's really up there. Um, <laughs> but the, the one hard thing is that even with 22 flavors, People say, oh, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? And when we try a new flavor, people are like, oh, where is such and such? And we only have so many spots to fill. Um, so it's really hard to introduce a new flavor. We, we do have seasonal flavors in the summer. Uh, we have different uh, sorbets that we add, yep. um, but we only very um, change like two or three flavors because people are really attached to their favorites. Yeah. You, mm -hmm. you call it the office a chocolate lab you use special cocoa from different parts of the country uh well not from the u.s of course because um, cocoa only grows within about plus or minus 30 degrees of the equator it has to be really warm lots of rain so we we can't grow it in the u.s uh, we bring a lot of cocoa in from central and latin america 
from uh, organizations that work with farmers, so it's all ethically harvested. We, we feel good about the cocoa we bring in. Um, we also work for the bonbons with um, cocoa processed in France by uh, Valrona and Cacao Berry, um, and that they're just real experts in making awesome chocolate, and we use that as a starting material for some of the others. Let's start trying some of these delicious chocolates that you brought here with for us today. I grew up with these right here, alfajores. They're mm -hmm. so good. Tell mm -hmm. us, let tell, tell everybody what is so incredible about these after I eat them. I want to <laughs> eat some right now. Of course. <laughs> so the alfajores are two shortbread cookies, soft shortbread cookies with a layer of dulce de leche and rolled in coconut flakes. Um, they are incredible and they sell by the dozen. Mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, we found, we initially we um, put them out because, you know, it was a, like the mate is a very um, Argentinian thing and we wanted to uh, bring Argentina to framing that, but we found that Americans love them, absolutely love them. And I also found that um, Dulce de Leche is loved all across Latin America. I thought mm -hmm. it was an Argentinian thing, but it's we. I have people from <laughs> all over uh, coming to get the jars, coming to get treats. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. This melts in your mouth. That's yep. why it's so good. Let's talk about your coffee and mate. Mate. So the, the, the specialty of mate. My grandmother used to drink mate uh, in Argentina in a little mm -hmm. cup with a, a, with a straw. straw in it. Yes. So it's a very Argentinian thing. It's like football and mate are the two defining uh, factors in, to a, of an Argentinian. Um, for us, it's a very traditional drink. It's like a tea that instead of uh, sipping it in, with, you know, in a bag or with a strainer, you strain the, uh, the water through the straw. Um, it's, it can be very strong. There's two ways to drink it. You can drink it like a, sip it like a tea in a bag, or you can drink it with a, the straw. And um, it's been said to have like a million health benefits. I don't know which one, if it's true or not, but it's a tradition, so you drink it anyways. And there's a lot of antioxidants in mate, and my grandma would take it she was always on a diet, mm -hmm. <laughs> and so it was an appetite suppressant, actually. Yes. So mm -hmm. that's why she would drink it. And then a lot of people in Argentina as well, they sit around and they pass it's a the tea around. Thing. So it's a real social thing as far mm -hmm. as um, sitting around everyone taking a little sip of the mate. Yeah. Let's get back to more cookies. <laughs> I'm not going to eat any more. So uh, some of them are very American. You know, the uh, chocolate chip cookies we do, that's kind of our bargain for okay. anybody who comes in. You can get those, they're a dollar each. Uh, it's really a Toll House cookie with better chocolate chips and with a nice dark Venezuelan piece of chocolate just melted on top. It's French processed. Um, we use uh, coconut macarons, or macaroons in this case, I guess. Um, the coconut and dulce de leche just go perfect together. And then our brownies, I like to call um, chocolate-centric brownies. A lot of brownies are more sugar than they are chocolate. Sugar is a great preservative and it's really cheap. So our brownies are a bit on the expensive side, but they're extremely chocolatey. This time of year, we just make uh, mini pies unless people order larger pies because it's not really the time of year people think of eating pie. That's true. Uh, we can still sell out of them on a weekend though. Um, right now we're doing mostly cherry pies because we can get good New York State or Michigan sour cherries frozen. And uh, that's a perfect start for both a cheesecake topping and a cherry pie. Um, our pies are made with all butter crusts, so our crusts definitely taste a bit different than, than most crusts you're used homemade, to tasting. Homemade, natural, great pies. Absolutely. I mean, even, even homemade uh, shortening has been, you know, the norm in the past, I would say, and then people have been cutting in more butter. Um, I just really love the taste of butter in a pie, and it gives it a great texture. Your pies, apple mm -hmm. pie, rhubarb pie, yep. cherry pie, 
tart pie. Uh, we make uh, lemon meringue with uh, the lemon nice meringue Italian well? meringue, okay. which is nice and well mm -hmm. said. said a nice uh, homemade lemon curd that we do as well. Tell us about this cake now. <laughs> <laughs> what is that one? <laughs> so, so that's more. So these two cakes are more French style cakes. Okay. Okay. Uh, these are actually both gluten free to the best of our ability to work gluten free in oh, a normal bakery. That's very we do good. a lot of cleaning to before we make these of our equipment, um, but it uses hazelnut flour and then a uh, kind of one to one flour substitute. Uh, and it's a European style biscuit, so it's done with meringue and nut flour. Um, on top of that is milk chocolate ganache, and then milk chocolate mousse, and then the whole thing is coated in a milk chocolate glaze. <laughs> Instead of hazelnut, this uses almond flour. It's another European style biscuit, four layers of the European style biscuit. It's brushed with a sweet coffee syrup, each layer. And then uh, we have in between the bottom two layers, that's a French buttercream flavored with coffee syrup. A French buttercream is different than an American in that it has egg yolk in it for a little bit more body. It has less sugar, so it's not going to be a very sweet buttercream. Uh, this thick layer in there is a really dark chocolate ganache, and then there's a chocolate glaze on top. Wow, wow. Gluten-free. That is yep. so great. So many people are gluten-free and they can't, they can't have any of this over here, but right. at least you have these two on the menu for them. So that's, that's wonderful. And we also have uh, Tres Leches and the Tiramisu. <laughs> Most places, when you get the the today's leches, you're going to get it from one supplier that is is frozen in right. large restaurant supply stores. Doesn't taste anything like this. You make yours uh, fresh. It yes. is every day fresh. It's not every day. It has a shelf life about two weeks. Okay. It, it lives in our store for about three days before it sells out. Okay. So. Um, and I know that wouldn't last in my house a day. So. <laughs> but it's a uh, very spongy cake. Um, there's no butter in this particular cake recipe. No butter. It's the only cake recipe Very we have unique. without butter. That's so important. Or oil. But it does get some fat from the milks because there's some heavy cream in our milk mix okay. as well as some sweetened condensed milk and some evaporated milk. Um, so all of the flavor comes. It just really soaks up a ton of milk. There's actually more of the milk blend than there is cake batter. We put the dulce de leche on top. Normally it would have something a little bit more like a soft meringue. Um, but we really like to do it with the dual selection it gives that extra carameliness and, and the cream we put in there gives it some more body and mouthfeel. Wow, okay. And the okay. tiramisu? So it's a very special tiramisu. Um, tastes different than other tiramisu. Uh, the cookie dip has some armagnac in it as well as fresh brewed espresso and melted chocolate. Um, mm. The cream layer starts with an authentic sabichon which uses sweet marsala wine and egg yolks uh, and a little bit of sugar. We add a little bit more flavor to it by putting in some Madeira with the sweet marsala. Very nice flavor from Madeira, super rich. Um, and then you just uh, melt your um, cheese into that and soften it up with some very soft whipped cream. Uh, it forms a perfect structure that just sets up this is, time. I've never seen a tiramisu this big. I have to <laughs> cut into this. You said it's different, it's unique. Look how soft it is. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, I, I'm going to eat some more. <laughs> and you definitely don't make that fresh every day because it needs, I don't even like to seal it until it's sat for at least 24 hours. Mm -hmm. It takes a while for the cookies to fully pull the moisture wow. out and to soften up. Really good. Oh my goodness. Which is that so was so find. light and fluffy, mm -hmm. was not heavy, was so good. I'm going to have to eat some more. <laughs> Guys, sorry. <laughs> what, I want to try this hazelnut. It's super soft to cut into because of oh, that wow. mousse on top. Uh -huh. right. It's a oh, very light milk chocolate mousse. mousse. Super light milk chocolate mousse. Mm. So you have to freeze that to pour the glaze on, otherwise it just kind of melts away as you pour the hot glaze. Tiramisu, if you know what you're doing and everything's done right, takes about three hours start to finish to make. Really? Uh, the opera cake is definitely a two-day procedure, parts of two days, just letting things cool and set and form and come together. Um, and then the hazelnut cake is probably also, I would say, at least two days of 
you know, letting things sit. And I think that the, the most rewarding experience is when you see people try your products and have their eyes roll back in their head. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they go, oh my God. That is just like the best feeling in the world. It's a great place for lunch because you can get your afternoon coffee, they have some savory food items, and you get your sweets. It's, it's really hard not to get something sweet because they have so many options between the gelato and the cookies and the chocolates and the, the cakes that they do. They do in really nice tiramisu. You kind of have that perfect little lunch. And I think they've also have been adding salads into the mix too, so the days that I want to feel a little bit healthier with the sandwich I'm getting, I can get a salad on the side too. And you've won the Taste of Metro West for mm -hmm. two years now as the best dessert. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So everyone in Framingham obviously loves all your desserts. And yeah. where do you see Dulce Leche in five to 10 years from now? Do you plan on expanding? We're expanding our kitchen because we don't have enough room, so we're uh, building a new kitchen. Uh, and after that, maybe a new, a new place or um, wholesale. Now, what's the secret with your cheesecakes? You make cheesecakes. <laughs> we don't have a cheesecake here, but I there's got to be some cheesecake. secret sauce about your cheesecake. Uh, Is I it an Argentine cheesecake? Is it a New York cheesecake? Is it light? It's more of a New York style cheesecake, not exactly. It's, it's definitely baked on the light side to keep the eggs from setting too much, so it's gonna be a very creamy cheesecake. Um, and it's, people love it just as, as is. Actually, we have one flying out to uh, San Francisco. Uh, this Friday. Uh, this oh, Friday. Really? Or yep. no, actually, she's picking it up today. Oh, okay. Yeah. She's hand carrying it on the plane <laughs> all the way to. I think uh, her boyfriend is visiting her and said he can't get our, a cheesecake that tastes right. like ours out there. So well, she's we, we the whole need one. to make sure now when people come <laughs> to visit Boston that they come to Framingham to see and taste a little bit of Argentina because mm -hmm. this Absolutely. really is incredible. They are like the alfajores I had in Argentina when I was growing up. And I also remember having some that were chocolate, chocolate covered. Yes, they come that's in the coming with a new kitchen. Right, okay. When we yeah. have room to um, put a belt, to a conveyor belt to uh, coat the alfajores in chocolate. So when is your next trip back to Argentina? <laughs> ah, good question. Um, <laughs> right now we're really tied up with the business and keeping everything going and developing the new kitchen. So I don't think it's gonna be in the next year. But. I wanna thank you so much for being on the show today. Uh, I love that we now have Buenos Aires in Framingham, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. This is truly incredible. I know you put your heart and soul and science into all these cakes and pies and desserts and tres leches. And thank you for being on the show today. No, thank you. Welcome, thanks. Thank you.